Fouling, Wikipedia Audio Fouling is the accumulation of unwanted material on solid surfaces to the detriment of function. The fouling materials can consist of either living organisms or a non-living substance. Fouling is usually distinguished from other surface growth phenomena, in that it occurs on a surface of a component, system, or plant performing a defined and useful function, and that the fouling process impedes or interferes with this function. Other terms used in the literature to describe fouling include, deposit formation, incrustation, crudding, deposition, scaling, scale formation, slagging, and sludge formation. The last six terms have a more narrow meaning than fouling within the scope of the fouling science and technology, and they also have meanings outside of this scope, therefore, they should be used with caution. Fouling phenomena are common and diverse, ranging from fouling of ship hulls, natural surfaces in the marine environment, fouling of heat transfer components through ingredients contained in the cooling water or gases, and even the development of plaque or calculus on teeth, or deposits on solar panels on Mars, among other examples. Components Subject to Fouling this article is primarily devoted to the fouling of industrial heat exchangers, although the same theory is generally applicable to other varieties of fouling. In the cooling technology and other technical fields, a distinction is made between macro-fouling and micro-fouling. Of the three, micro-fouling is the one which is usually more difficult to prevent and therefore less important. Following are examples of components that may be subject to fouling and the corresponding effects of fouling. Heat exchanger surfaces reduces thermal efficiency, decreases heat flux, increases temperature on the hot side, decreases temperature on the cold side, induces under-deposit corrosion, increases use of cooling water, piping, flow channels reduces flow increases pressure drop, increases upstream pressure, increases energy expenditure, may cause flow oscillations, slugging in two-phase flow, cavitation, may increase flow velocity elsewhere, may induce vibrations, may cause flow blockage, ship. Hulls creates additional drag, increases fuel usage, reduces maximum speed turbines reduces efficiency, increases probability of failure, solar panels decreases the electrical power generated, reverse osmosis membranes increases pressure drop, increases energy expenditure, reduces flux, membrane failure, electrical heating elements increases temperature of the element, increases corrosion, reduces lifespan. Nuclear fuel in pressurized water reactors axial offset anomaly, may need to derate the power plant. Injection slash spray nozzles incorrect amount injected, malformed jet, component inefficiency, component failure, venturi tubes, orifice plates inaccurate or incorrect measurement of flow rate. Pitot tubes in airplanes inaccurate or incorrect indication of airplane speed, spark plug electrodes in cars engine misfiring, production zone of petroleum reservoirs and oil wells decreased petroleum production with time, plugging, in some cases complete stoppage of flow in a matter of days, teeth. Promotes tooth or gum disease, decreases aesthetics. Living organisms deposition of excess minerals in tissues is linked to aging slash senescence. Macro fouling is caused by coarse matter of either biological or inorganic origin, for example industrially produced refuse. Such matter enters into the cooling water circuit through the cooling water pumps from sources like the open sea, rivers, or lakes. In closed circuits, like cooling towers, 
the ingress of macro fouling into the cooling tower basin is possible through open canals or by the wind. Sometimes, parts of the cooling tower internals detach themselves and are carried into the cooling water circuit. Such substances can foul the surfaces of heat exchangers and may cause deterioration of the relevant heat transfer coefficient. They may also create flow blockages, redistribute the flow inside the components, or cause fretting damage. As to micro-fouling, distinctions are made between Scaling or precipitation fouling involves crystallization of solid salts, oxides, and hydroxides from solutions. These are most often water solutions, but non-aqueous precipitation fouling is also known. Precipitation fouling is a very common problem in boilers and heat exchangers operating with hard water and often results in lime scale. Through changes in temperature, or solvent evaporation or degasification, the concentration of salts may exceed the saturation, leading to a precipitation of solids. As an example, the equilibrium between the readily soluble calcium bicarbonate, always prevailing in natural water, and the poorly soluble calcium carbonate, the following chemical equation may be written. Scaling or precipitation fouling, as crystallization of solid salts, oxides, and hydroxides from water solutions, for example, calcium carbonate or calcium sulfate, particulate fouling, i.e., accumulation of particles, typically colloidal particles, on a surface, corrosion fouling, i.e., in situ growth of corrosion deposits, for example, magnetite on carbon steel surfaces, chemical reaction fouling, for example, decomposition or polymerization of organic matter on heating surfaces, solidification. Fouling, when components of the flowing fluid with a high melting point freeze onto a subcold surface, by a fouling, like settlements of bacteria and algae, composite fouling whereby fouling involves more than one filant or fouling mechanism. The calcium carbonate that forms through this reaction precipitates. Due to the temperature dependence of the reaction, an increasing volatility of CO2 with increasing temperature, the scaling is higher at the hotter outlet of the heat exchanger than at the cooler inlet. In general, the dependence of the salt solubility on temperature or presence of evaporation will often be the driving force for precipitation fouling. The important distinction is between salts with normal or retrograde dependence of solubility on temperature. The salts with the normal solubility increase their solubility with increasing temperature and thus will foul the cooling surfaces. The salts with inverse or retrograde solubility will foul the heating surfaces. An example of the temperature dependence of solubility is shown in the figure. Calcium sulfate is a common precipitation filant of heating surfaces due to its retrograde solubility. Calcium carbonate, calcium sulfate, calcium oxalate, barium sulfate, magnesium hydroxide, magnesium oxide, silicates, aluminium oxide hydroxides, aluminosilicates, copper, phosphates, magnetite or nickel ferrite from extremely pure, low iron water. Macro fouling Precipitation fouling can also occur in the absence of heating or vaporization. For example, Calcium sulfate decreases its solubility with decreasing pressure. This can lead to precipitation fouling of reservoirs and wells in oil fields, decreasing their productivity with time. Fouling of membranes in reverse osmosis systems can occur due to differential solubility of barium sulfate in solutions of different ionic strength. Similarly, 
precipitation fouling can occur because of solubility changes induced by other factors, e.g., liquid flashing, liquid degassing, redox potential changes, or mixing of incompatible fluid streams. The following lists some of the industrially common phases of precipitation fouling deposits observed in practice to form from aqueous solutions. The deposition rate by precipitation is often described by the following equations. Where Fouling by particles suspended in water or in gas progresses by a mechanism different than precipitation fouling. This process is usually most important for colloidal particles, i.e., particles smaller than about 1 μm in at least one dimension. Particles are transported to the surface by a number of mechanisms and there they can attach themselves, e.g., by flocculation or coagulation. Note that the attachment of colloidal particles typically involves electrical forces and thus the particle behavior defies the experience from the macroscopic world. The probability of attachment is sometimes referred to as sticking probability, P. Where KD and KT are the kinetic rate constants for deposition and transport, respectively. The value of P for colloidal particles is a function of both the surface chemistry, geometry, and the local thermohydraulic conditions. An alternative to using the sticking probability is to use a kinetic attachment rate constant, assuming the first order reaction. Microfouling Precipitation fouling and then the transport and attachment kinetic coefficients are combined as two processes occurring in series. dm-dt is the rate of the deposition by particles, kgm2s1, ka, kt and kd are the kinetic rate constants for deposition, m-s, ci and cb are the concentration of the particle foland at the interface and in the bulk fluid respectively, KGM3. Particulate fouling Corrosion fouling Chemical reaction fouling Solidification fouling Biofouling Where Iron oxides and iron oxyhydroxides Sedimentation fouling by silt and other relatively coarse suspended matter being essentially a surface chemistry phenomenon, this fouling mechanism can be very sensitive to factors that affect colloidal stability, e.g., zeta potential. A maximum fouling rate is usually observed when the fouling particles and the substrate exhibit opposite electrical charge, or near the point of zero charge of either of them. Induction period Sometimes a near-nil fouling rate is observed when the surface is new or very clean. This is often observed in biofouling and precipitation fouling. After the induction period, the fouling rate increases, negative fouling. This can occur when fouling rate is quantified by monitoring heat transfer. Relatively small amounts of deposit can improve heat transfer relative to clean surface, and give an appearance of negative fouling rate and negative total fouling amount. Negative fouling is often observed under nucleate boiling heat transfer conditions or forced convection. After the initial period of surface roughness control, the fouling rate usually becomes strongly positive, linear fouling. The fouling rate can be steady with time. This is a common case, falling fouling. Under this scenario, the fouling rate decreases with time, but never drops to zero. The deposit thickness does not achieve a constant value. The progress of fouling can be often described by two numbers, the initial fouling rate and the fouling rate after a long period of time, asymptotic fouling. Here. The fouling rate decreases with time, 
until it finally reaches zero. At this point, the deposit thickness remains constant with time. This is often the case for relatively soft or poorly adherent deposits in areas of fast flow. The asymptote is usually interpreted as the deposit loading at which the deposition rate equals the deposit removal rate, accelerating fouling. Under this scenario, the fouling rate increases with time, the rate of deposit buildup accelerates with time. Mechanistically, this scenario can develop when fouling increases the surface roughness, or when the deposit surface exhibits higher chemical propensity to fouling than the pure underlying metal, seesaw fouling. Here, fouling loading generally increases with time, but, when looked at in more detail, the fouling progress is periodically interrupted and takes the form of sawtooth curve. The periodic sharp variations in the apparent fouling amount often correspond to the moments of system shutdowns, startups, or other transients in operation. The periodic variations are often interpreted as periodic removal of some of the deposit. Steam blanketing has been postulated to occur between the partially spalled deposits and the heat transfer surface. However, other reasons are possible, e.g., trapping of air inside the surface deposits during shutdowns, or inaccuracy of temperature measurements during transients. Particles larger than those of colloidal dimensions may also foul e.g., by sedimentation, or straining in small size openings. Generation or ingress of the species that causes fouling Philant transport with the stream of the process fluid, philant transport from the bulk of the process fluid to the fouling surface. This transport is often by molecular or turbulent eddy diffusion, but may also occur by inertial coasting slash impaction, particle interception by the surface, electrophoresis, thermophoresis, diffusiophoresis, Stefan flow, sedimentation, Magnus force, thermoelectric effect, and other mechanisms, induction period, i.e., a near nil fouling rate at the initial period of fouling, filant crystallization on the surface, sometimes fouling autoretardation, i.e., reduction of crystallization slash attachment rate. Due to changes in the surface conditions caused by the fouling deposit, deposit dissolution, deposit consolidation on the surface or cementation, which account for deposit losing its porosity and becoming more tenacious with time, deposit spalling, erosion wear, or exfoliation. Composite fouling With time, the resulting surface deposit may harden through processes collectively known as deposit consolidation or colloquially, aging. The common particulate fouling deposits formed from aqueous suspensions include Fouling by particles from gas aerosols is also of industrial significance. The particles can be either solid or liquid. The common examples can be fouling by flue gases, or fouling of air-cooled components by dust in air. The mechanisms are discussed in article on aerosol deposition. Corrosion deposits are created in situ by the corrosion of the substrate. They are distinguished from fouling deposits, which form from material originating ex situ. Corrosion deposits should not be confused with fouling deposits formed by ex situ generated corrosion products. Corrosion deposits will normally have composition related to the composition of the substrate. Also, the geometry of the metal oxide and oxide fluid interfaces may allow practical distinction between the corrosion and fouling deposits. An example of corrosion fouling can be formation of an iron oxide or oxyhydroxide deposit from corrosion of the carbon steel underneath. Corrosion fouling should not be confused with fouling corrosion, 
i.e., any of the types of corrosion that may be induced by fouling. Chemical reactions may occur on contact of the chemical species in the process fluid with heat transfer surfaces. In such cases, the metallic surface sometimes acts as a catalyst. For example, corrosion and polymerization occurs in cooling water for the chemical industry which has a minor content of hydrocarbons. Systems in petroleum processing are prone to polymerization of olefins or deposition of heavy fractions. High tube wall temperatures may lead to carbonizing of organic matter. Food industry, for example milk processing, also experiences fouling problems by chemical reactions. Fouling through an ionic reaction with an evolution of an inorganic solid is commonly classified as precipitation fouling. Solidification fouling occurs when a component of the flowing fluid freezes onto a surface forming a solid fouling deposit. Examples may include solidification of wax from a hydrocarbon solution or of molten ash onto a heat exchanger surface. The surface needs to have a temperature below a certain threshold, therefore, it is said to be subcold in respect to the solidification point of the filant. Fouling on Mars Biofouling or biological fouling is the undesirable accumulation of microorganisms, algae and diatoms, plants and animals on surfaces for example ships' hulls, or piping and reservoirs with untreated water. This can be accompanied by microbiologically influenced corrosion. Bacteria can form biofilms or slimes. Thus the organisms can aggregate on surfaces using colloidal hydrogels of water and extracellular polymeric substances. The biofilm structure is usually complex. M is the mass loading of the deposit on the surface, T is time, KD is the deposition rate constant, ρ is the fluid density, CM, mass fraction of filant in the fluid, λ R is the re-entrainment rate constant, MR is the mass loading of the removable fraction of the surface deposit, and λ C is the consolidation rate constant. Quantification of fouling Bacterial fouling can occur under either aerobic or anaerobic conditions. In practice, aerobic bacteria prefer open systems, when both oxygen and nutrients are constantly delivered, often in warm and sunlit environments. Anaerobic fouling more often occurs in closed systems when sufficient nutrients are present. Examples may include sulfate-reducing bacteria, which produce sulfide and often cause corrosion of ferrous metals. Sulfide-oxidizing bacteria, on the other hand, can produce sulfuric acid, and can be involved in corrosion of concrete. Zebra mussels serve as an example of larger animals that have caused widespread fouling in North America. Progress of Fouling with Time Fouling Modeling Economic and Environmental Importance of Fouling Composite fouling is common. This type of fouling involves more than one filant or more than one fouling mechanism working simultaneously. The multiple foul ants or mechanisms may interact with each other resulting in a synergistic fouling which is not a simple arithmetic sum of the individual components. NASA Mars Exploration rovers experienced abiotic fouling of solar panels by dust particles from the Martian atmosphere. Some of the deposits subsequently spontaneously cleaned off. This illustrates the universal nature of the fouling phenomena. The most straightforward way to quantify fairly uniform fouling is by stating the average deposit surface loading, i.e., kg of deposit per m superscript 2 of surface area. The fouling rate will then be expressed in kg slash m superscript 2s, 
and it is obtained by dividing the deposit surface loading by the effective operating time. The normalized fouling rate will additionally account for the concentration of the filant in the process fluid during preceding operations, and is useful for comparison of fouling rates between different systems. It is obtained by dividing the fouling rate by the filant concentration. The fouling rate constant can be obtained by dividing the normalized fouling rate by the mass density of the process fluid. Deposit thickness and porosity are also often used for description of fouling amount. The relative reduction of diameter of piping or increase of the surface roughness can be of particular interest when the impact of fouling on pressure drop is of interest. In heat transfer equipment, where the primary concern is often the effect of fouling on heat transfer, fouling can be quantified by the increase of the resistance to the flow of heat due to fouling, or by development of heat transfer coefficient with time. If under deposit or crevice corrosion is of primary concern, it is important to note non-uniformity of deposit thickness, localized fouling, packing of confined regions with deposits, creation of occlusions, crevices, deposit tubercles, or sludge piles. Such deposit structures can create environment for under-deposit corrosion of the substrate material, e.g., intergranular attack, pitting, stress corrosion cracking, or localized wastage. Porosity and permeability of the deposits will likely influence the probability of under-deposit corrosion. Deposit composition can also be important, even minor components of the deposits can sometimes cause severe corrosion of the underlying metal. There is no general rule on how much deposit can be tolerated, it depends on the system. In many cases, a deposit even a few micrometers thick can be troublesome. A deposit in a millimeter range thickness will be of concern in almost any application. Deposit on a surface does not always develop steadily with time. The following fouling scenarios can be distinguished, depending on the nature of the system and the local thermohydraulic conditions at the surface. Fouling of a system can be modeled as consisting of several steps. Deposition consists of transport to the surface and subsequent attachment. Deposit removal is either through deposit dissolution, particle re-entrainment, or deposit spalling, erosive wear, or exfoliation. Fouling results from filant generation, filant deposition, deposit removal, and deposit consolidation. For the modern model of fouling involving deposition with simultaneous deposit re-entrainment and consolidation, the fouling process can be represented by the following scheme. Equals. Equals. Following the above scheme. The basic fouling equations can be written as follows. Where This system of equations can be integrated to the form Where lambda equals lambda r plus lambda c This model reproduces either linear, falling, or asymptotic fouling, depending on the relative values of k, lambda r, and lambda c. The underlying physical picture for this model is that of a two-layer deposit consisting of consolidated inner layer and loose unconsolidated outer layer. Such a bilayer deposit is often observed in practice. The above model simplifies readily to the older model of simultaneous deposition and re-entrainment when lambda c equals zero. In the absence of consolidation, the asymptotic fouling is always anticipated by this older model and the fouling progress can be described as where M asterisk is the maximum mass loading of the deposit on the surface. Fouling is ubiquitous and generates tremendous operational losses, not unlike corrosion. For example, 
one estimate puts the losses due to fouling of heat exchangers in industrialized nations to be about 0.25% of their GDP. Another analysis estimated the economical loss due to boiler and turbine fouling in China utilities at $4.68 billion, which is about 0.169% the country GDP. The losses initially result from impaired heat transfer, corrosion damage, increased pressure drop, flow blockages, flow redistribution inside components, flow instabilities, induced vibrations, fretting, premature failure of electrical heating elements, and a large number of other often unanticipated problems. In addition, the ecological costs should be considered. The ecological costs arise from the use of biocides for the avoidance of biofouling, from the increased fuel input to compensate for the reduced output caused by fouling, and an increased use of cooling water in once through cooling systems. For example, Normal fouling at a conventionally fired 500 MW power station unit accounts for output losses of the steam turbine of 5 MW and more. In a 1,300 MW nuclear power station, typical losses could be 20 MW and up. In seawater desalination plants, fouling may reduce the gained output ratio by two-digit percentages. The extra electrical consumption in compressor-operated coolers is also easily in the two-digit area. In addition to the operational costs, also the capital cost increases because the heat exchangers have to be designed in larger sizes to compensate for the heat transfer loss due to fouling. To the output losses listed above, one needs to add the cost of downtime required to inspect, clean, and repair the components, and the cost of actually doing this maintenance. Finally, fouling is often a root cause of serious degradation problems that may limit the life of components or entire plants. The most fundamental and usually preferred method of controlling fouling is to prevent the ingress of the fouling species into the cooling water circuit. In steam power stations and other major industrial installations of water technology, macro fouling is avoided by way of pre-filtration and cooling water debris filters. Some plants employ foreign object exclusion program. Acoustic monitoring is sometimes employed to monitor for fretting by detached parts. In the case of micro fouling, Water purification is achieved with extensive methods of water treatment, microfiltration, membrane technology, or ion exchange resins. The generation of the corrosion products in the water piping systems is often minimized by controlling the pH of the process fluid, control of oxygen dissolved in water, or addition of corrosion inhibitors. For water systems at relatively low temperatures, the applied biocides may be classified as follows, inorganic chlorine and bromide compounds, chlorine and bromide cleavers, ozone and oxygen cleavers, unoxidizable biocides. One of the most important unoxidizable biocides is a mixture of chloromethyl isothiazolinone and methyl isothiazolinone. Also applied are dibrom nitrolopropionamide and quaternary ammonium compounds. For underwater ship hulls bottom paints are applied. Chemical fouling inhibitors can reduce fouling in many systems, mainly by interfering with the crystallization, attachment, or consolidation steps of the fouling process. Examples for water systems are, chelating agents, long-chain aliphatic amines or polyamines, organic phosphonic acids, or polyelectrolytes polymethacrylic acid, usually with a molecular weight lower than 10,000. For fired boilers, aluminum or magnesium additives can lower the melting point of ash and promote creation of deposits which are easier to remove. 
See also process chemicals. Magnetic water treatment has been a subject of controversy as to its effectiveness for fouling control since the 1950s. The prevailing opinion is that it simply does not work. Nevertheless, some studies suggest that it may be effective under some conditions to reduce buildup of calcium carbonate deposits. On the component design level, fouling can often be minimized by maintaining a relatively high and uniform fluid velocity throughout the component. Stagnant regions need to be eliminated. Components are normally over-designed to accommodate the fouling anticipated between cleanings. However, a significant over-design can be a design error because it may lead to increased fouling due to reduced velocities. Periodic online pressure pulses or backflow can be effective if the capability is carefully incorporated at the design time. Blowdown capability is always incorporated into steam generators or evaporators to control the accumulation of non-volatile impurities that cause or aggravate fouling. Low fouling surfaces are an option for some applications. Modern components are typically required to be designed for ease of inspection of internals and periodic cleaning. Online fouling monitoring systems are designed for some applications so that blowing or cleaning can be applied before unpredictable shutdown is necessary or damage occurs. Chemical or mechanical cleaning processes for the removal of deposits and scales are recommended when fouling reaches the point of impacting the system performance or an onset of significant fouling-induced degradation. These processes comprise pickling with acids and complexing agents, cleaning with high-velocity water jets, recirculating with metal, sponge, or other balls, or propelling offline mechanical bullet type tube cleaners. Whereas chemical cleaning causes environmental problems through the handling, application, storage, and disposal of chemicals, the mechanical cleaning by means of circulating cleaning balls or offline bullet type cleaning can be an environmentally friendlier alternative. In some heat transfer applications, Mechanical mitigation with dynamic scraped surface heat exchangers is an option. Also ultrasonic or abrasive cleaning methods are available for many specific applications. Fouling Control